If we want to unlock the secrets of the brain, we need a window to peer inside. Electroencephalography, or EEG, serves as that window. By recording electrical signals on the scalp, EEG offers us a glimpse into the synchronized neural activity of thousands of neurons. EEG is not only a vital tool for studying brain function, but also plays a critical role in clinical diagnostics. So, what are the biggest advantage of EEG? Simply put it, the peacemaker of brain exploration, by merely attaching a few electrodes to the scalp, EEG measurements are entirely non-invasive. On the other hand, invasive techniques, like electroxortography, ECOG, require going inside, much like a specialized task force. This makes EEG the go-to tool for scientists and doctors alike. After all, placing a few electrodes on the scalp is far more acceptable than inserting electrodes into the brain, would you agree? What at the heart of EEG measurement? Electrodes. Without them, EEG would be like cooking without ingredients, depending on their design and usage. Electrodes can be categorized into four main types, each with its own strengths and weaknesses, just like different types of cooking utensils, suitable for different purposes. First, we have wet electrodes, the classic cookware of the EEG world. These electrodes use conductive gel or saline solution to reduce impedenins between the electrode and the skin, thereby improving signal quality. While wet electrodes provide excellent data quality, they can be a bit inconvenient to use. Gel needs to be applied to ensure proper contact, but over time, the gel dries out, leading to a decline in signal quality, much like a dish that cools off too quickly. Next are dry electrodes, the fast food utensils of EEG. They don't require gel and can measure signals simply by making contact with the skin. The key advantage here is convenience, making them ideal for portable devices or quick measurements. However, their signal quality may not be as stable as wet electrodes, especially for long-term recordings where they might fall short. The number and placement of electrodes determine the field of view and the sources of the EEG signals. Think of it as the difference between looking through a small window versus a panoramic glass wall, depending on the experimental requirements. The number and placement of electrodes can vary. So where exactly should the electrodes be placed? This is where the International 10 to 20 system comes into play. The International 10 to 20 system is a method of electrode placement based on the anatomical features of the head, widely used in EEG measurement. Its core concept is to ensure that the electrode positions correspond to specific areas of the brain, while maintaining uniform distribution of the electrodes. First, let me learn the naming convention for the electrodes. The letters represent different brain regions. FP stands for the frontal pole, F stands for the frontal, T stands for the temporal, C stands for the central, P stands for the parietal, and O stands for the occipital. A represents the auricular. In addition, the numbers indicate the position. Odd numbers are on the left hemisphere, even numbers are on the right hemisphere, and Z represents the central midline region. For example, FP1 represent the left frontal polar position, while CZ refers to the electrode located at the central top of the head. Next, let and learn about the placement of electrodes. The term 10 to 20 actually describes the spacing between electrodes, which is determined based on 10% or 20% of the distance between specific points on the head. Specifically, along the front to back axis, a line is drawn from the nasian to the inion. On this line, five points are marked from front to back, named as follows, FPZ, FZ, CZ, PZ, and OZ. The distance from the FPZ to the nasion, as well as the distance from the OZ to the inion, each accounts for 10% of the total length of this line. The remaining points are spaced 20% apart along the rest of the line. Now, looking at the horizontal plane, a line is drawn from the left preauricular point through the central point to the right preauricular point. Along this line, symmetrical points are marked as T3, T4, C3, and C4. The distance from T3 and T4 to the preauricular points each accounts for 10% of the total length of this line. The remaining points are spaced 20% apart along the rest of the line. On the lateral plane, a line is drawn from the FPZ point backward.
passing through T3 and T4 points to the OZ, forming left and right lateral lines. Along these lateral lines, symmetrical points are marked from front to back, the distance from FP1 and FP2 to FPZ, as well as the distance from O1 and O2 to OZ, each accounts for 10% of the total length of these lines. The remaining points are spaced 20% apart along the rest of the lines. The remaining points, F3 and F4, are located midway between FP1 and FP2 and C3 and C4, respectively. Similarly, P3 and P4 are located midway between C3 and C4 and O1 and O2, respectively. This standardized placement method ensures the reproducibility of EEG experiments and the comparability of data. Whether you're a researcher or a clinician, the 10 to 20 system allows for quick identification of brain regions and clear understanding of electrode functions. Now, let's explain the impedance. EEG impedance refers to the resistance between the electrodes in the scalp, and it is an important factor that affects the quality of EEG signals. The magnitude of the impedance can influence the efficiency and quality of signal transmission. If the impedance is too high, the signal can be contaminated by noise, similar to the static you hear when headphones have a poor connection. Generally, the impedance needs to be below 5 kilo ohms to ensure signal clarity. During our measurements, the software will display whether the impedance meets the requirements. If the electrode shows a green icon, it indicates that the electrode meets the requirements. If the software displays red, it means that further reduction of the impedance is necessary. So how can we effectively reduce impedance? Here are some common methods. One, using conductive gel. Conductive gel can fill the gaps between the electrodes in the skin, enhancing conductivity. Two, cleaning the scalp, removing oil and dead skin cells from the scalp can help reduce impedance. Three, ensuring tight contact between the electrodes and the skin. Adjust the electrode position and pressure to ensure there are no gaps between the electrodes and the skin. These steps may seem trivial, but they form the foundation for acquiring high quality signals. Next, we will explain the reference electrode and why it is necessary to use one. In electroencephalography recording, the reference electrode is crucial because EEG signals are obtained by measuring the potential difference between two electrodes. The reference electrode provides a baseline, helping us interpret brain activity more accurately, so which electrodes can be used as reference electrodes. Common reference electrodes include CZ, linked ears, linked mastoids, ipsilateral ear, contralateral ear, and nasion. In fact, during data acquisition, researchers can select any site as the reference electrode because the reference point can be adjusted later during offline data processing through re-referencing. Finally, let's take a look at the core components of an EEG measurement system. Electrodes, amplifiers, and analog to digital converter. Electrodes capture the weak brain signals. Amplifiers boost these signals to a processable range while suppressing environmental noise. And ADC convert the analog signals into digital signals for subsequent storage and analysis. Finally, the EEG signal data is processed and analyzed using computer software. This is the general data acquisition process in EEG. The entire process is like cooking. Electrodes are the ingredient detectors, amplifiers are the flavor enhancers, and the ADC is the key tool that packages the final product. By selecting the appropriate electrode type, number, and placement, controlling impedance effectively, and setting a proper reference electrode, we can collect high quality data. These seemingly small details are actually the foundation of high-quality research. Just like seasonings in cooking, they may seem insignificant, but ultimately determine the final flavor of the results.